Let's do an example using the Graham equation. So we're giving this question. So the question tells us something about the solid involved. We have a solid and it looks like there's a grid of charges on that solid. So we could sort of draw something like this where there's a square lattice of charges. So certainly the surface is charged. And although it's not given to us by name, since we know what this distance is, we know that this is 10 nanometers. We can figure out how many charges there are per square meter. So this is really giving us the surface charge density sigma. And we're asked to get the surface potential uh, of the solid, so we know we're going to use the Gram equation. To keep things simple, we'll use a linear Gram equation and then check afterwards to make sure it was justified, which it will be if the surface potential is low enough. So first of all, let's calculate the surface charge density based on the data. So we know sigma is just defined as charge over area. So let's plug in what we know. Well, we can see that if we were to offset the, this is given as a lattice like this, square lattice. We could just as well shift the lattice to make squares of that size. And we can see that in each square, there's one charge. Or equivalently, we could look at the red squares and say each red square has a quarter charge and still adds up to one charge. Either way, it's fine. So we have one charge. And uh, since it says there's one positive charge, we're going to assume that's one uh, electrostatic unit. In other words, one electron charge unit. So 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. And then we have the area of the square on the bottom and that's 10 nanometers squared. So 10 times 10 to the negative 9 meters squared. And we can see that that is going to come up to a surface charge density of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 3. Coulombs per meter squared. Okay, so we've got the sigma, and if we write out our uh, linear Gram equation, we know that sigma is equal to times kappa, which is of course the inverse to eye length, and times the surface potential. So since we want this, we have this. We know the uh, it doesn't actually say it's an aqueous solution, so we're going to just assume aqueous because we need to know the dielectric constant of our solvent. Uh, but we need to figure out what the what the inverse to by length is. We can get that by knowing what the solvent is, what the temperature is, and also what's the concentration of salt. So let's figure out the dielectric. Let's figure out the divide length on the next page. And we saw earlier that for aqueous solution of the sodium chloride room temperature, we got a divide length of 0.3 nanometers when we were working with one molar. Well, our problem is that we're working not at one molar, but at a much lower concentration. But if we look, the only thing we're changing is the concentration. So we can take everything else, including the conversion factors for concentration, and pack them into one little factor. and save ourselves some work. And so we can say that a by length is equal to 0 0.30 nanometers over the square root of ionic strength. And ionic strength for uh, one to one electrolytes like sodium chloride is going to be approximately equal to just the concentration and molarity. It's actually the concentration and molality, but in dilute solutions they're going to be almost identical. So I'll just give you the definition of ionic strength. Ionic strength is one half of a summation of the molality of each ion times the charge on that ion squared. And you just sum over all ions. And for a one-to-one -one salt, this is just going to give you the concentration. So this little equation here, this little shortcut, is good for aqueous solutions 
at 25 degrees C. We have to remember that if we change the temperature or if we change the solvent, this equation is not going to be exact anymore. Okay, so we have this. We could use this to figure out the divine length for our solution. So for our little problem, we had a divine length equal to point zero. 0 0.30 nanometers over the square root of the ionic strength, which is point, it's 100, 100 millimolar, so 0 0.100 molar, and we get 0 0.96 nanometers. Okay, so we have that, and that allows us to go forward in the problem because we know kappa is 1 over our divide length. So gathering these pieces together, we're now ready to solve the problem. So we take the Graham equation and we solve it for the surface potential. So the surface potential is simply the surface charge density divided by the dielectrics and divided by kappa. Or we could equally say it's the surface charge density times the Debye length over the dielectrics. So now we plug in the numbers we got earlier. So we have our surface charge density we said was 1.6 times 10 to the negative 3 coulombs per meter squared. We said that the lambda was 0.96 nanometers, or we could say 0.96 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. And then at the bottom, we have these dielectrics. So we have water at room temperature, 78.5. We've got the permittivity of free space, 8.85, 10 to the negative 12 coulomb squared per joule per meter. This comes out to 2.2 times 10 negative 3 volts. When you cancel your units, remember that a volt is a joule per coulomb. Okay, so we can say this is 2.2 millivolts, and we can see that's uh, well below the threshold for using the uh, linear gram equation. We can use the linear gram equation when the electron charge times the surface potential over 2 kT is much less than 1. And when you have a surface potential in, you'll see that that was indeed true. So it's perfectly appropriate to use the linear form of the Gram equation. All right, so this gives you an idea of the, what kind of surface potential you'd expect for a given surface charge density.